Hello guys and welcome to a new Stud Division 2 video today by me Balkan. In this one I have for you a preview of the 4th Canadian Armoured, a new division available in the upcoming Tribute to Normandy 44 DLC. As a disclaimer, Eugen has given me free access to the DLC so a big thanks to them. Also please remember that this was recorded on a preview build so what you see may be subject to change. If you'd like to read the description on the right hand side feel free to pause the video and take a look but we're going to be jumping straight on in. As usual we're going to be going through all of the units available and then we'll put together a quick deck. So let's start in the recon tab with the Otter Mark 1. Now the 4th Canadian Armoured is actually a division that wasn't in the division normally 44, so we are going to see a few new units, including the Otter Mark 1 here. 8 in Phase 8, 16 in Phase B, Radio Recon Armoured Car with a Bren and Boys AT as its armament. An interesting armoured car, I like always seeing the new models in the game. And yeah, fun little one to use I suppose. Recky, two man Recon squad for the Canadians, 4, 8, 12 availability throughout the phases. Can be brought in with a range of universal carriers, including the 2-inch mortar carrier variant, which is one I like, as well as the Stuart Recce, which is also a pretty decent option because of the 50 cal. And there's also the option of the Otter Mark II, which is fun. It's an unarmed version of the Otter Mark I. And it does stay on the map, I believe. Then we have the Recon from the Americans. This division does get a bunch of Americans, but I believe they all come in either B or C phase. Uh, the recon here does have a range of transports, Jeep 30 Cal, M20, WC25, HMG, but you'll notice that the availability on these is only 9, which means you are forced to vet the recon if you want to be able to bring them in. Next up we have the Scout SAR. These are Tank Rider Trait. Recon Infantry, which is interesting. Uh, two Stens, five Lee Enfields, Brent, Piat, similar set up to like a motorized rifle. And they can be brought in with White Truck, Bedford, and the CMP. The idea of the Tank Rider trait is that you use them with the uh, Shermans that are also in this tab, which we'll get to in just a moment. But three, six, and nine availability of those. Then we have normal scouts, which can be brought in with the Universal Carrier, White Truck, and the Stuart Recce. Uh, 5, 10, 15 availability. Two cards of those available. And we have the Americans with the scouts. WC25 HMG is available. But otherwise, not much to look at there. Scouts with Pia. 3, 6, 12 availability on these. Can also be brought in with similar transports to Stens, to Leonfield, Piat squads. Pretty standard stuff. We've got a card of Staghounds, only available in Phase A at one vet, so you get three on a card. Staghounds are, are pretty nice early on for taking on light armor. And they're pretty fast, so they get into position quickly. M8s also relatively good, but not so much in Phase C, which is when they arrive. 12 available on a card. Finally, we have the Sherman 5 SAR, which is really cool. Radio Recon does have tank rider trait, so you can combine these with other tank rider infantry. You do have some kangaroo rifles in the infantry tab. You've got the scouts here that can utilize that tank rider trait, and the Sherman can act as like recon for your kangaroo rifles, which is kind of a cool combination. But here, 80 points, 75 mil gun, 50 cal, 230 cals, Standard stuff, 100 mil frontal armor, 80 point recon tanks aren't too shabby. 4, 8, 12 availability on those, and they actually vet up pretty nicely, so probably want to be using veterancy on these. Moving on to the infantry tab. First of all, we have the Assault Pioneers. The Assault Pioneers have a decent range of transports, but nothing too exciting. 9 available in A, 18 available in B, the standard 3 Sten Life Boy. Uh, flamethrower with the smoke grenade. Then we got the defense group coming in at one vet. Can be brought in with the M5 half track, which could be an interesting combination just to get some extra suppression from these cheap squads. Build engineers, 9, 18, 27 availability. No crazy transports for these guys. Standard five man TNT squad for the Commonwealth. Engineer leader, two stands, three Leonfield TNT, standard 
TNT leader, reavailable in A at one vet. Then we have the motorized rifles, eight available in A, 16 available in B, and they do actually up vet and only lose like two per card, which is sometimes worth thinking about. Uh, but they can only be brought in with half tracks that have 30 cows. So it's an it's an okay. Like having a half track is not usually better than not having a half track. Rifles, 9, 18, 27 availability. Bedford or CMP is their transports. 10 man squad with two stens, 7 Leon Fields Bren. We've got the motorized rifle leader. Three stens, Bren and smoke grenade. It's actually a really nice setup. I do like this setup. Um, three available in A at one vet. Smoke's always nice on a leader. I do like having smoke. Then we got the late variant, which is uh, three stens, two Lee Enfields, and a Lee Enfield sniper and smoke grenades. It's a shame there's only two on a card at uh, two veterancy here. If you could bring them in or like have more availability to bring in at phase B, you'd probably use those quite frequently. Uh, the other thing I didn't point out here is that the motorized rifle leader can be brought in with the 50 cal half track and also the command steward which has a 50 cal uh, same with the mo uh, motorized rifle like actually no never mind uh, they can be brought in with the c15 or the command steward the command steward is always a nice choice regardless then we have the rifles with pia 9 18 27 availability uh, pretty standard again with the eight Lee Enfield two Bren Piat setup. Rifle leader two Sten Lee Enfield Piat three six nine availability. Good for just filling out leader availability if you need them. Uh, then we have the kangaroo rifles. Now the kangaroo rifles in this division only come in phase C, uh, which is interesting because you actually get quite a lot of them. There's two cards, eighteen per card. They can be brought in with the normal kangaroo. Or the Ram Kangaroo. The Ram Kangaroo has some significant armor, 17 millimeters of frontal armor, making it a very scary vehicle actually, 10 points, 50 cal, 30 cal, 70 mils of frontal armor. That's a really, really nasty for squads to come up against, infantry squads. The four stands, eight Lee Enfield, three Brands, Piat, the Kangaroo Rifles, always a solid squad. And if you combine them with the recon tanks, you're gonna be having a fun time. There's also the Rifles Late, 12 Strength, Thompson M1 Garand, 2 Bars, and they can be brought in with the M3 Half Tracks. And finally, there's a Rifle Leader that comes in Phase C, which comes with the Springfield Bazooka, 8 Strength Leader Squad. Pretty solid, honestly, as a leader. But uh, yeah, a lot of this stuff coming in very late in the Infantry Tab. And overall, the Infantry Tab is... A bit lackluster aside from the kangaroo rifles, it's just the kangaroo rifles come in late and the only interesting leader uh, only comes in with low availability. So I feel like the infantry tab's a bit mediocre. Moving on to the tank tab, we have first of all the Stuart. Three available in A at one vet, 37mm gun, 55mm uh, frontal armor with three 30 cows. Uh, you've also got M5A1s, standard ones coming in Phase A and B, 8 and 16 availability. There's the M475 coming in Phase C. This is the 110mm frontal armor variant. And then also the command variant of those. Standard Sherman 5. 5, 10, 15 availability. Nothing changing there. You've got the Sherman 5 command. Same tank, just with the leader trait. Firefly 1 C's, getting a new lick of paint. They actually look really nice in this division. I like how they are uh, textured. Look much better than the other uh, Sherm or Firefly 1 C's that we've got in the game so far. But 8 available in A, 12 available in B. And then the Firefly 5 C is actually available in Phase A and B. 3 available in A, 6 available in B. Both of these are sporting the same 17 pounder 30 cow combo it's just the firefly 1c has a bit less armor all right moving on to the support tab we have first of all two cards so sorry six cards of two inch mortar carriers or two inch mortars no, sorry when these could if these could come in two inch mortar carriers it'd be a disgusting combination but uh 
unfortunately not. 540 meter range kind of lets them down. 6, 12, 18 availability on those. Wasp Mark II. Only available in A. 4 on a card. A little flamer tank this is. And we got the Vickers HMG. 6, 12, 18 availability. Can actually be brought in with 50 cal half tracks and M5 half tracks. Could be an interesting choice early on. Then we've got the American 50 cal coming in in phase C, 12 on a card. Three cards of Bedford supply trucks, two for six availability as usual. M4 105s arriving in phase C for long range 2000 meter range HE fire support. Then we have Curry, the uh, good old commander for the fourth Canadian, is an ace. Can be brought in with a range of transports. There's also the Ram 2 commander and the Sherman 5 commander. The Ram's always an interesting tank. Not the, the strongest tank in the world, but mounts a six pounder instead of the standard M375 mil. And moving on to the anti-tank tab, we have a Piat card, six, 12, 18 availability. No interesting transports for them. Six pounders, a three, six, nine availability, standard stuff. 115 millimeters of penetration at 1,500 meter range. Their APCR only able to be fired at 1,000 meter range with the 175 millimeters of penetration. Can be brought in with the Shurimi, which is an interesting choice, but generally you're going to want to go for the CMP truck because it's the fastest. Then there's the 17 pounders, two, four, six availability is standard. A bunch of different transports you can bring them in, including the supply truck. Not that you'd probably ever want to do that combination. And finally, there's actually four cards of Achilles, which is quite a lot. Two, four, six availability of those do have increased rate of fire over the normal tanks. Same with the 17 pounder. All right, moving on to the anti-air. We have three, six, nine availability for the Crusader AA Mark II. Two cards, both as 40 mils. Can be brought in with the Stuart Remy. Three, six, nine availability. There's three cards of both as 40 mil on the trucks. Two, four, six availability. And Crusader AA Mark Ones, which both is on an armored hull. Crusader hull. Three, six, nine availability on those. All right, moving on to the artillery. We have spotters. Three available in A, six available in B, radio recon. Can be brought in with the Otter Mark II, the new little armoured card there. We've got the Artillery Commanders. Just a reminder, I haven't said this in a little while, that Artillery Commanders will reduce the dispersion of nearby tube artillery. Not mortars, not MLRS, just tube artillery. I think it also affects like self-propelled artillery as well. So it's an interesting thing to make use of in order to increase the overall accuracy of your artillery. We have two, four, six availability. 81 mil mortars or a 12 availability. There's actually four cards available of those, but they don't have radios. So unfortunately, nothing to really write home about. 107 mil mortars. You actually get four of these in phase A. 4, 8, 12 availability is not terrible availability for 107 mil mortars. Yes, they don't have radio, but for 107 mm mortars, it's not so much of a problem because the blast radius and suppression radius is very important. And so it's it's still pretty good on a 107. 25 pounders, two cards available, but only available in B and C, 6 and 12. Can be brought in with the Crusader Tractor. It's a new unit that was added in this DLC. It's in another division as well. Uh, I think it's in the other two Commonwealth divisions, the Guards and the Desert Rats. But yeah, always a, a decent choice because it has 15,000 supply and it has armor. So it's not going to die to that like random counter battery artillery fire that I'm sure most of you are uh, familiar with. M2A1, nine available in C at 75 points. Can be brought in with a high speed tractor. And then there's four cards of sextons. 
2, 4, 6 availability, so that's what they're kind of encouraging you to use here. And in the late game, there's two cards of M1A1 long toms, the 155mm artillery. All right, finally, the air tab. We've got the Asta Mark III, 6 available in A, 9 available in B, standard 15-point recon aircraft. Then there's the F6C, which is a recon aircraft with 450 cows, so it can actually somewhat shoot down enemy aircraft, like enemy fighters and stuff. Two available in B, four available in C. Then we have the P-38, eight available in B, 12 available in C. It's not really a unit that you want to bring in B and C just because it's such bad resilience. It gets shot down so easy. Then we got the Mosquito with the four 227 kilogram bombs, one available in A, two available in B, four available in C. A little bit disappointing on the availability there. And then there's the Marauder, E26B Marauder, four available in B, six available in C, six 227 kilogram bombs. So actually a bigger payload than the Mosquito, as you can see, and uh, generally a better choice. Like the availability on these is four in B, as opposed to the Mosquito, which is two in B, and this Marauder gets a bigger payload and is actually way more tanky. So yeah, not a fan of the, the price to availability ratio of the Mosquito. Typhoon Mark 1B, four available in eight, six in B, eight in C. If you have bet these, you're going to have a decent strafing aircraft as well due to the four Hispanos. There's also the Typhoon Mark 1B, which comes in with the eight 150mm RP3 HE rockets. Two, four, six availability on those. There's also a card of the Typhoons. One, two, and four availability across the phases with two 454 kilogram bombs, which is a, a nice payload for sure, especially on the Typhoons since they're so fast. Not much to see in the defense tab, so let's go ahead and throw together a quick deck. So starting in the recon, we're obviously bringing the Otter. <laughs> not, not really the best choice, but hey. We're going to throw in a load of the Sherman recon. We're going to bring the scouts as well. So usually what I'd probably do here is have like a recce squad or a scouts the Piet squad or something in phase A instead of the Otter. <laughs> but otherwise I think this is what my recon tab's gonna look like. Get all those Sherman SARs in there. In the infantry tab. Let's see. Then the Mott rifle late. Oh did I I looked over these. Uh, I didn't actually touch on those. They have a browning instead of a Bren, and they have one more Sten instead of a Lee Enfield. An interesting unit, but only available later on and can't actually be brought in with any significant like half track, which kind of makes them a bit bad. But for 20 points, so they're not a terrible squad. Yeah, I did look over those, I think, because I scrolled down and I missed them. So sorry about that. But in the assault, uh, in the infantry tab, I think assault pioneers or field engineers are going to have to be chucked in here. We definitely do kangaroo rifles with rams in the late game. I'm kind of tempted to upvet these, but then I don't think it matters if you upvet them, because you won't have enough to fill two cards anyway. Yeah, so we do like one with ram. One with standard kangaroo. Maybe chuck those ones up the two back because that's a lot of availability. Okay, so we've got our late game kangaroos. Now we just got to figure out what we want to do in the early game. We'll bring in the motorized rifle leader that I like. Is there any transport that I would want to bring that in? Not necessarily. I think defense group in half tracks is actually not a terrible idea. Especially with like the Bren accuracy increase, defense groups are a bit more efficient than they were before. Not like massively. But if you combine the 30 cal on the half track with the defense group, I think they can hold positions for you quite nicely. We'll do a phase A card of motorized rifles. And then a phase B card of motorized rifles late. 
with a card of Pia Infantry as well. The motor or the standard rifles of Pia because they're like a long range infantry squad. Yeah, then again, like, do I want these? Probably not. I mean, we'd be better off just bringing in more rifles of Pia, I think. And the double Bren, like, almost a must. And it's just a matter of, like, do I bring in close range infantry squad instead? I think we go build engineers in B with a rifle P in phase A, actually. Something like that. It's a lot of points used up in that tab though, because the last card is four points. All right, Fireflies in phase A with some Shermans. The other thing I might be able to do is like take out that leader and just put in like a phase A M5A1. And then we do like a phase B Sherman. We'll do phase B Fireflies. Phase C Fireflies. Something like that. Uh, let's bring in the American tanks in phase C. They have a bit of extra armor. Right, the support tab. We gotta bring in the ace leader. Of course, the Ace Commander. And I think this is just going to be space for supply. But I'm going to bring in the Vickers HMG with the 50 car half tracks. Anti tank. Not terribly important in this division. A card of six pounders early on is a good shout. And potentially also some 17 pounders. I might even up bet the 17 pounders in phase B. I don't think we need to go too crazy here. Unless I want to remove a card in the tank tab and throw in an Achilles. Because this is only a one point card. We could always do this I suppose in phase C. NEA is pretty generous in this division. That's for sure. I think early on we're going to do Crusade AA Mark 1s and then Mark 1s in Phase C as well. Mark 2s in Phase B. Uh, for the Artillery tab. I almost want to bring in both these cards of Long Tons in Phase C. <laughs> they don't get brought in with Supply though, which would require a phase C supply card potentially. I think we'll bring in these mortars in phase A, which would then require a phase A or phase B supply card. Because those mortars. Hmm. I got 30 shells. We can go phase B supply. And then in the air tab. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to mess around with these points. The two cards of Kangaroo Rifles in Phase C might be a bit much. I think we can take that out. Let me rely on Achilles instead. Just because that tab is so cheap. And then that gives us the space to add some aircraft. Because I think these Typhoons are probably worth bringing. The Typhoon one Mark, uh, Mark 1B. This is a really nice bomber. I think we'll do like one card in phase B of the B-26s. Or we could go with Rocket Typhoons. I might go Rocket Typhoons as they'll be able to help us deal with heavier armor. Alright, that's looking okay. 4th Canadian Armoured. 
Perfect. So yeah, I would obviously replace the Otter Mark 1 as much as it's a cool little vehicle. It's not going to be in most decks. Um, you'd probably just want like a recon infantry in phase A. But we got the Sherman recon throughout all of the phases. To be honest, I might not even need the M475 in here. We could maybe have these or Fireflies instead of the M475s and just have the Sherman 5 recon there. That could be another way to switch things up. Yeah, generally speaking, I think it's a nice, well-rounded, versatile deck. And it has plenty of options to deal with heavier armor. It's got some uh, fun artillery. It's infantry, not so great. I'm not a big fan of the fact that it has like so much emphasis on this tank rider, Sherman, but then doesn't really have like tank rider trait on motorized rifles, for example. I feel like motorized rifles in general should have tank rider trait, but hey, it is what it is. I think the fourth Canadian armor, it's going to be pretty fun to play, but uh, nothing too special about it. That's it for now. Let me know what you think about the fourth Canadian down in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.